Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and we're a couple days away from the Kaldheim release, uh, the new magic set that's built around Norse mythology, Vikings, giants, and a bunch of gods. Um, so I'm going to be participating in the early access streamer event, as I've done for about the last year. And uh, leading up to it, I always brew together a bunch of decks. Last time I think I did 25 decks. Um, but I wanted to kind of demo a couple decks ahead of time. Uh, this is being filmed on Saturday the 16th, so a couple days before the final stream, uh, the releases go up. Um, but I think for the most part, majority of the cards are here. If anything does change between now and then, I'll go through and revise the deck list on Aetherhub. But I want to kind of share some ideas ahead of time and see what you, uh, the viewer, thinks. Um, as always, if you do have any kind of suggestions for build arounds, themes, uh, deck lists that you have and you want to potentially see uh, stream during the early access event, do drop a comment in my YouTube videos as always. Um, and if you can, like, comment, and subscribe. And to know when we go live on the 27th, uh, you can always follow on Twitch. It's all free to do and it helps the channel. Um, so jumping into it, this is Grixis Giants, Blue, Red, Black Giants. Um, so we have a theme here. Um, so new cards in the set. We have Quakebringer, a 5 mana 5-4. Five, your opponent can't gain life. At the beginning of your upkeep, Quakebringer deals 2 damage to each opponent. Um, you can only activate this ability if Quakebringer is on the bat. Uh, so basically, you need Quakebringer in either in your graveyard or on the battlefield, and you need to control a giant. Uh, and then there's the ability Foretell. So for, for, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, Foretell allows you to pay 2 mana, exile the card, uh, two generic mana, and then you can cast it as a reduced cost for its foretell. So you can pay two mana on turn two or three, and then on turn four, you can cast it. Now you can't pay two mana and then foretell it right away. It needs to be done at a later junction in time. Um, then Agar, the Freezing Flame. This is a three mana, three, three, uh, legendary giant wizard. Um, so whenever a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls dealt excess damage, if a giant wizard or spell you control dealt damage to it, you get to draw a card. So we have ways to kind of deal extra damage, which I'll show, and you can kind of get some card advantage there. It's also pretty aggressively sl uh, statted, 3 mana, 3-3. Three, three. So kind of just taking a step back for the bigger picture, we're trying to play uh, self-mill and kind of get value, lots of removal, and then use our giants to kind of get it. So Quakebringer, you might not have cast. It might just sit in your graveyard and then hit your opponent every turn for two. Um, Battle of Frost and Fire. Uh, so this is a five mana Saga. It's the giant Saga. So chapter one deals four damage to each non-giant creature and each Planeswalker. Um, any excess damage dealt this way, you get to draw cards, which is really cool. Uh, you get to scry three. And then uh, chapter three is if you cast a five CMC, uh, greater you draw two cards and discard a card. Uh, we don't have too much that's five uh, CMC really we're using this as kind of a one-sided board wipe So that's why we're really playing two and not more just because we can't really take like huge advantage of the later chapters um, It's kind of blocked off here with my webcam, but glimpse of the cosmos. We're playing four of um, so it is a, a two mana basically anticipate look at the top three cards of your library put one in your hand rest the bottom it of your library um, but if it's in your graveyard and you control a giant you get to pay one blue mana and then cast it from your graveyard so we can mill it over and then cast it which is really cool that way there um, so jumping in we have calamity bearer this is a four mana um, effectively deals uh, double uh, damage if a giant source you control would deal damage um, notably as we kind of uh, move into Croxa. Croxa's ETB is life loss, not damage. So you don't get to deal double off the ETB or attack trigger, but Croxa itself would hit for 12. Um, the Bone Crusher Stomp would deal four. Um, the Calamity or the Quakebringer would deal four as well on his trigger. So you have kind of ways with that. Um, and then with the excess damage, you draw cards off the Legendary Giant as well. Uh, Croxa is because we're self-mill and it is an elder giant and Croxa is one of my favorite cards so um, pretty much the reason why I want to play this was Croxa and a whole bunch of self-mill kind of like the Arcanist deck. Um, Bone Crusher Giant, Tried and True, one of the best creatures in standard, um, really versatile and we get to kind of further abuse it with Calamity Bear and the giant sub theme. 
Um, so kind of the ways we self mill, um, we don't have Stitcher Supplier in, like we do in Historic or Modern or Pioneer. Uh, so instead we're using Meyer Trade-In. It's a two mana, two one. Obviously you mill two, it's been around for a while. Mill two, gain two, death touch, so it can trade up as well in terms of value. Um, we're gonna try out a one of Royal Scions. This has always been a Planeswalker I've really liked, but has never felt good enough. But I think in this shell, we could kind of make it work. So you can chip your like excess um, bo uh, Croxas, your uh, Anticipate Giant spell, uh, and then loot through your deck, throw in your Quake Bringers into the graveyard. Its other plus ability gives your tr Giants Trample. So your Bone Crusher now is a six power Trampler with First Strike, uh, and its ultimate can kind of pressure your opponent from an alternative angle. So something cool to try out. Uh, we have Timerite Calls of the Dead, another way to mill. Uh, this puts more cards into our graveyard and then helps us find like our Quake Bringers, Croxas, stuff like that. Um, in terms of the removal suite, and this is just kind of where I'm starting, obviously it's going to be dependent on where the meta settles um, for the choices of certain removal spells. But something I want to try out was um, the Giant Matters card in Squash. So this is uh, 5 mana, deal 6 to target planeswalker or creature but if you control a giant it's only two mana um which is actually a really good rate um kills croxas in the mirror kills gargaroth um so something notable that we want to try out it might be worth to play four of it might be worth to not play any so this is something we want to test out um heartless act um like i mentioned in the elves video uh heartless act over eliminate is really predicated on what the meta looks like if there's a lot of counters stuff like that um, but I think as a general, in the dark, I would play Heartless Act just to start off with. Um, and then finally, a couple Blood Chief's Thirst. I like it early. It's a one mana removal spell. Uh, late game can kill any creature or planeswalker. So it's flexible in that sense there. Again, with removal, ultimately you tailor your removal based on what the meta looks like. Going in blind, I like to have options. In terms of the mana base, where you're playing a couple Shatter Skull Smashings, um, spell land, useful to deal a lot of damage late game. Uh, we have Fable Passages to fuel Croxa. We finally, finally, finally get a Rakdos Pathway. Um, Rakdos typically is aggressive decks, and we've been playing tap lands. So I'm super excited for that, specifically for Historic, but also in Standard. And then um, we're playing just two or more of each of the Pathways um, for Izzet and Demir. So full 12 uh, Pathways. And then um, I'm not playing Snow Covered. You can play Snow Covered. But we're playing one island and three of each in terms of swamp and mountains. So that pretty much wraps it up, Grixis Giants. Let me know what you think. Um, there's like um, Tectonic Giant, the four mana, three, four. Um, something I wanted to try to fit in here, but it didn't really work was uh, Footfall Creator uh, to give our stuff haste. There's a lot of different angles. This is probably where I'm going to start. I don't think this is probably the be-all, end-all. But it is an interesting way to kind of get going. And like I mentioned on the onset, if you do have any ideas, build around, stuff like that, do let me know. I'll be putting out a few more of these. So if you have any suggestions in terms of the format or just in terms of the explanations, uh, do let me know as well. Welcome to feedback. Otherwise, look forward to the 27th. Hopefully see you there. And uh, otherwise, stay safe. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a great one.